I have to admit that the basic Shetzian design gets kinda boring for me. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still looking awesome and it's looking clean. But let's take for example the separator component here and while this is a clean separator, there's a better one. And this is that one. And while that looks like a normal separator, it's actually elastic and has physics built in. Take a look if I move my cursor. It gets sticky to it and then it bounces. And okay, that is not for professional websites, but for your own portfolio or for some funny playful things, that's actually crazy, right? So this video should be about some fancy components because using these components that I'm going to show you here makes Shetzian feel a little bit boring. So this is actually my new favorite right now. So my name is Toby and let's get started with some awesome components. I don't want to waste your time. Time is money, as we know. So let's get started. So the library I'm using here is called Fancy Components. And under this physics tab, we have another nice physical effect and that is called Gravity. You see that? I can play around with things here and Gravity is actually working in your browser. And that what you're seeing here is unbelievable hard to do this on your own because you need a lot of libraries right okay you need simple programming language like typescript and react that is not the problem motion okay kind of most people of you might know motion and maybe tailwind but what about let's turn around let's get it turned around what about dry or what about meta js so one question you may be having in your mind right now is can i actually use that is it hard to implement that in your website let's go through that and let's do it very, very quickly. How do we actually implement that? And for that, we have this installation section and it's using this Shetzi and CLI. But what we just do is copy the command, go into our application, open the terminal, paste the command, click enter. We say use force, it's about React 19 and stuff like that. If use force is not working, try the other one. One of them will always work. And here we are, we've created three files, fancy gravity, utils calculate position and SVG path to vertices. And that's it. Because what we now can do is just creating a simple page and copy and pasting some nice code or maybe you write it your own you get this classes from components fancy gravity start the application and then just go to the route where you have implemented it click enter and there you have your 3d effect it's that easy and you can even already play around with that and that with so less code yeah, it's actually working. But yeah, I seem to be a fan of that. I just want to secure that this video is not sponsored by Fancy Components. I just love how things are working out here. So as you saw, it's not easy to get this into your project. But you may are curious now, Toby, what else has this library that I can use? And let me show you this image things. Because for example, the image trail, it's a little bit buggy because it's still in better. This is so cool. It's following the path of your cursor and showing those nice images there. You can decide what images, of course. And then you have this parallax floating. This parallax floating is so cool that I actually want to implement this today in my website. What this essentially is doing is it's creating a very expensive effect, like expensive feeling effect, that when you move into a specific direction, the background objects are moving in the opposite direction. And that creates an awesome effect if you move around here. Next thing is the sticky footer component. And here we get now into a space where most of us just want to have a simple footer. But while that is completely okay, a footer which has a cool effect is even better, right? And this footer effect has the sticky effect. So it's like appearing out of nowhere. It's so simple and so intuitive. And usually I wanted to stop the video right here. But there's one more effect. One effect that I discovered exactly before I recorded this video. So five, 10 minutes ago. And this was the text cursor proximity and in general terms, the variable font cursor proximity, because I didn't even know that this is possible. I never saw it before, because I thought adjusting font thickness, font boldness, whatever you want to call it, is not possible with animations. And here I see it is working. I have no idea why. I mean, I can take a look at how it's done, but I'm too lazy for that, because that's your job right now. Go into this library and take a look at this, because I know watching a video might be boring. So why not? Check it out yourself. Links in the description.